Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Saoirse and in today's um, episode we're going to be discussing um, why I believe that charting the cycle is key to healthy mental health in the neurospicy community. Had to remember that because I just started, um, I was just about to start filming about 10, 15 minutes ago and it was hammering with rain. So I was like, right, hopefully this will stop. <laughs> um, and I do have my notes as per usual down here. Um, I'd love to hear what cycle day you're on. I am on cycle day 13, so I'm in very much in inner summer, ovulation, um, and feeling really cute. Also, I just thought I've never used this before, so I thought it would be kind of fun to like just just take this off as I'm um as I'm talking about this this topic today. Um, because I've not used it, it's like a heatless curl thing. I think it was like a pound. I found it online like last year, and it even came with the cute little scrunchies. Didn't realise it came with those. Um, and you know when you just like haven't just haven't tried anything in ages um, and actually I did sleep in it and it was really really comfortable so that's quite good because often if I'm like sleeping in yeah I don't know something to help to do something fun with my hair um, it just is really uncomfortable to actually just get to sleep um, so yeah so yesterday I, I dyed my hair because it had been a little while and I'm actually going to a funeral on Monday and I was just like I just need it to look you know, like more presentable and I also gave it a little cut um, I'll link the video that I used to cut my hair below if you, if you like it. Um, I don't know what it looks like yet because I've not let it dry. Ooh, ooh, hello. Oh, that's quite cute. My hair is naturally dead straight, so anything where there's like a bit of curl in it, I'm always get I always get very excited. Oh, I quite like that, you know. Obviously, I can give it a bit of a zhuzh, but I'm going to film a few videos today, so I think I'm going to I'm going to just leave it and not <laughs> not fiddle with it too much and just let it be. And then it will probably just fall out a little bit over the next couple of videos. But I've also got some like um, a nice volume sort of hairspray I could use as well. So, oh, and also framed my, oh, not too shabby sort of frame. I could have gone a bit shorter with my front cut, but I'm actually quite happy with that. Oh, okay. That's quite, that's not a bad haircut, is it? For a DIY. Mm, okay, right. <laughs> Okay, so let's get to the meat of today's video. I just thought I'd do that. I was like, oh, I'll just see what it looks like. Right, so I've got my notes. I'm gonna use these because otherwise I will just go off track. And sometimes when I'm ovulating, I could just talk for England. So we're gonna try not to do that today. So if I look down a bit, I'm sorry. It's just so that I actually remember what I'm talking about. So <laughs> this is, um, again, I'm using this presentation, which has been so helpful. It's like 86 pages, I keep adding to it. And I used it for a, um, I was invited to talk um, to actually neuro, a neurospicy community. Um, uh, she's not really an influencer on um, Instagram. She is a um, astrologist and she's just incredible. Um, her name's B, um, and I will, um, if I remember, I will uh, pop her like a, a her IG or something, either on the screen or um, I'll pin it to the comments. But she's really amazing and she really kindly invited me to come and speak to her coven. So that was really cool. And I think that was 2023, was that last year? I think it was last year. So when I did that, I kind of made a presentation just to make it a little bit easier. And again, just to stay on topic and actually I've used that as the core for a lot of these, as well as the podcast for a lot of these videos. So I'm really glad I have it just because again, I sort of forget about all of the research that I do for some of these things. And I'm like, oh yeah, I, oh, I forgot I did a, you know, did a hyper, hyper, hyper focus on that. So um, yeah, so today what I wanted to discuss was, um, yeah, why I believe that charting your cycle is key to healthy mental health in the neurospicy community. So I think that um, obviously there are a plethora of benefits of tracking your cycle um, and there's a lot of, you know, physical health benefits as well. And obviously these things, I like to take a very holistic view. So obviously all, the, all of these things can be linked together. We can't just necessarily pick one, you know, one thing. But I think that it's so... Um, important in in like the neuro spicy community because there are um such a plethora of things going on at the same time and also just life right just life happening um and i think that the charting of our cycles just gives us a really good anchor and i i kind of have used that phrase a lot um i've noticed as i've been recording and it's just because that that is how it feels for me as someone that's quite like a bit rootless by nature i've traveled a lot i've explored a lot i I just find it like very, um, I'm very restless and I didn't know for a really long time until I was 31 
I'm 34 now that I had ADHD. So um, I just, yeah, anything that gives me like a good anchor, I just respect. Also, can I just shout out to my new spring decor? I'm very, very proud of this. Um, yeah, I've done like a little um, spend um, follicular phase with me. So I kind of go into these bits, but I just thought it was funny that I put it all up and then um, earlier this week and then it just absolutely hammered it down with rain. Uh, anyway, so cycle care and well-being so <clears throat> when we understand our cycle we gain a much better understanding of our mind body and um our overall <coughs> our overall well-being so i keep coughing i don't have a drink either it's on the other side of the room <coughs> um, um, our hormones fluctuate during the different phases of our cycle and this can really impact our mental attitude our energy and our physical health and I don't think there's I think there's there's becoming more and more research now but I feel like there's not as much research as there could be on 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 the fluctuations of women's um, hormones and how that can affect our, our mental health and a really good example of that is actually um, with my psychiatrist when I started you know when I started being medicated um, and he was explaining that actually there's a lot of research on how um, the uh, like stimulant medication for example um, is uh, how that affects men um, but there's not a, anywhere near as much um, information on how it affects females and or women assigned at birth and all females assigned at birth. And I feel like um, that's really obvious the more I've learned about cycle practices and also ADHD and hormones. So um, there's still a long way to go, I think. And also just having these conversations and also just not being dismissed by your doctor or psychiatrist. And I don't mean to sound really negative in that respect, but my psychiatrist was very, very much like, yeah, of course it's going to be different, like for females, you know. And I was like, ah, oh, this is so refreshing because that's not always the information that, um, you know, friends and and associates, um, associates, friends and well, yeah, I guess associates people that are, you know have shared with me. So, um, yeah, I think if someone is saying that there's no difference at all, I think that you know I would say get a, get a second, third, fifth, five, seven, nine, ninth. <laughs> words get a, get a second opinion or a fifth opinion um right I need to calm down so um for those of us who are um, neurodiverse or neurodivergent I never know how to correctly use those words sorry uh there can be more fluctuations or challenges during our cycle as our bodies and mind react to different hormones in a variety of ways so I want to touch on a few things in this video. I guess, to be honest, each of these topics could have its own video, but just so I'm doing a bit of an overview today, um, I wanted to kickstart with ADHD and burnout, which is something close to my heart. Um, so I feel like, um, yeah, I, I mean, first of all, holding the tension. Um, myself and Julia speak a lot about holding the tension. Um, I think we did a whole episode about it in um i think in free flow the podcast free flow season two um i will do my best to find that episode and and again link it in the um in i'll probably pin it in a comment or something um but shana and alexandra of red school really speak about holding the tension in the inner autumn phase of the cycle and i mentioned that in my actually it's not out yet but i'll be talking about it in my inner autumn 101 and i think i probably briefly mention it as well in the inner seasons video which i'm actually still editing i'll be editing that today so i'm pretty sure i mention it in there but i think as well that uh, we definitely have to hold the tension in the inner um autumn but i feel like actually for me in my experience that I've had to, there's different, I have to hold the tension in different ways during my cycle. Like even today being in um, in a summer, I'm having to like hold the tension of wanting to be like, Wah! like this <laughs> really, really scatty and like talking really, really fast and getting really overexcited. I kind of have to hold that tension and be like, okay, just focus a little bit, like ground yourself a little bit. Um, and yeah, and I think that um, yeah, holding the tension uh, can really help us to, to prevent burnout. Um, obviously there are other factors involved but I think that for for me when I was burning out was when I was just I was just trying to do all of the things all of the time um, and I was just sacrificing sleep I was like living off like nicotine from cigarettes and just like um, you know caffeine and um, uh, and just not sleeping you know it was like a four hours sleep or six hours was like a good night and now I'm like I can't I can't do that I just can't and I'm sure that's also a, a difference in um, being in my early 20s versus being in my early 30s I just can't for me I just can't get I can't get away with having less sleep I just feel 
stuck and slow or just really awful and, t and full of tears. Um, and I also firmly believe that cycle syncing is the antidote to hustle culture. Um, I did a Instagram post on this a little while back actually, and it got quite, you know, it was quite well received. And um, I do just think that, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to, it's really going against that, that hustle grain that I feel like as a, um, I mean, I was born in 1989 in December. So as a sort of a eight, very late eighties, nineties child, I feel like there was a lot of like ingrained productivity. You have to sort of be almost like my worthiness is found in being productive. And, you know, the hustle culture has been huge, the girl boss culture. Um, and I feel like there's been quite a big kickback now with that. Um, but sometimes I feel like it's just still there. It's just kind of in a, through a different lens. Like, I don't know, the clean girl aesthetic era, things like that. Like a lot of those things are still, you still have to be very privileged to either have access to those things or you have to just have the money or time or, you know, don't have kids or other commitments to be able to maintain that kind of lifestyle that is seen as um, high quality, productive, um, healthy, positive, good. <laughs> Um, I've got peace out perfectionism. Uh, I do have on my Instagram, which again, I'll, I'll put it on a screen or something. Um, I do have some wallpapers that I made. That I think are really just, they're just fun. And one of them says like peace out perfectionism. And I think that um, Anna Parker Naples, who's someone um, who's a really fantastic mentor, amazing entrepreneur. I actually met her when I was doing, um, when I was doing, I was when I was a stage manager for Macbeth. Uh, a couple of years ago, oh no, like 10 years ago now, a couple of years, like 10 years ago, 10 years ago actually this year, wild, um, I think this year or last year, anyway, a decade ago, and she is a, an incredible voiceover um, artist and actually she's pivoted into the entrepreneurial world and just in Anna Park and April style, like she's just completely like smashed out of the park as well, she's amazing. Um, and she, uh, I'm, you know, she's not the first to say this phrase, but I remember you know, with discussing this with her about um, done is better than perfect. And I was like, oh, and I don't know why it stuck with me when she said it, because I've heard it before. Um, it's not anything new, but it is quite profound if you actually just do that. Like if you just do the thing like today, it's like, you know, I could have just not filmed because of the rain. And I was like, okay, I did a little test and I was like, you can still hear me. Um, you know, I don't have a professional microphone. I don't have a professional camera. I'm doing this on my phone. I, you know, there's lots of things that like aren't in place, but I'm really passionate about this. I'm really passionate about this topic and it's changed my life. And I want to talk about it. And I think that there's a lot that can be gained from someone listening to me and, you know, um, having that dialogue with me as well. I mean, I learn a lot from other people having these discussions. Um, and <clears throat> if I just keep waiting until I'm ready, that's never gonna happen. And there's so many people that, yes, you can, I mean, I'm not the only person talking about this kind of thing. I don't know many that are talking about it in an ADHD relative way. That's not um, something I've come across loads yet. Um, but I mean, it's out there, but it's not, there's not loads of people doing it. But even if someone was doing the exact same, you know, content as me, there's a way that I'm going to share it with you that will resonate with you. And that's why you'll enjoy my content. There also might be a way that I explain it and it doesn't really resonate with you. And then hopefully you'll find someone else that does. So I think anyway, just go, without going down on a massive tangent, as someone who's like a recovering workaholic perfectionist, I have to remember that done is better than perfect. Um, so peace out perfectionism. And I think that the cycle practice can really help with that. I think that, um, yeah, embracing like the editing, just get it done phase is of my luteal phase, for example, is really, really helpful rather than what used to happen where the inner critic was just running rampant throughout all of the phases of my cycle. And I was just shooting myself down, you know, in like the vulnerable idea phase of, you know, in a spring or taking action in, in a summer and I'd be like super hypercritical and then nothing was, was actually getting done, you know, <laughs> which is why I've had this YouTube channel for so many years and I've had a big break from sharing anything. Um, also, I think overextending ourselves during um, via negativa or ovulation. So if you haven't watched my video on the two vias, go and check that out. It should be out. Oh, actually, am I putting that one out? 
I think actually that's going to come out after this video so <laughs> make sure you watch it after this one um, because I do go into it a lot more but the via negativa is basically the second half of our cycle so luteal and menstrual phases and your energy is going to start to wane so if we're overextending ourselves in those times and even in I think even in ovulation if you're just packing everything in to that time then actually we kind of set ourselves up for all this stress and all this pressure and um, the stuff just doesn't just doesn't get done because we get really overwhelmed and we kind of burn out and um, myself and Julia spoke about this we recorded an episode of free flow yesterday um, that actually will come out earlier because it was a slightly out of order but it was basically our ideal in a spring day and we kind of um, were discussing about um, yeah not not putting everything in in a spring and in a summer and actually maybe even just you know allowing ourselves to do a little bit less or to not have the standard as super duper high perfectionist style and just getting it done and what that feels like uh, uncomfortable for me but also necessary okay so then we've got adhd and estrogen so when estrogen is on the rise during the first half of our cycle it triggers the release of what i lovingly refer to as the three musketeers so you've got dopamine serotonin and neuroneparine which i don't know if i'm saying correctly um because i forgot to look it up before i started filming this video but there we go um, and the three musketeers bring better cognitive performance happiness and satisfaction so um i'm just curious if you know if you've noticed this during your um cycle um i only have you know an adhd experience so i'm always intrigued by other you know neuro spicy um you know uh, people's you know uh experiences one thing I did see actually on a Facebook group I'm in the other day was that someone was saying they are um, autistic and ADHD and they really notice in the second half of their cycle that the um, autistic like reigns, like it's like the, aut the autism with a lot of things like clothing textures and um, tightness of those those fits or loose fits or um, light light uh, sensory issues, things like that. They, they really find that um, a lot more strong in the second half of their cycle. I also am aware there's a lot of crossover between ADHD and autism and I'm still learning so much and um, I'm quite curious because I find that as well and I don't know if I am also autistic as well as having ADHD it wouldn't surprise me or if it's just because of those the way the hormones are interacting with the ADHD um, as someone who also has PMDD which I'll go into um, for the month of April because it's PMDD awareness month um, so again there's so many crossovers that it's hard to kind of distinguish um, and I don't think that we necessarily have to give everything a label, but I do think it helps to learn more about ourselves and have a better understanding and thus manage our mental health better. So I'd love to hear any of your thoughts on that. Maybe also um, OCD, like I, I do have some OCD tendencies where um, one thing that like really pops out to me is like though I have to wear like either a certain item of clothing or um, a certain amount of like hair ties, things like that. But it's not like, oh, I have to do that because it will be a good day. It's like, I have to do that. Otherwise, like I'm going to just be a mess all day and it's going to be a horrible day. So um, again, it's just, it's very, very interesting to me. I haven't been diagnosed with OCD. Um, it's something that I had a conversation with someone uh, last year who's ADHD and um, has OCD, um, who's an ex-midwife. She's amazing, a friend. And um, yeah, she kind of got me thinking about it then. So food for thought. Okay, ADHD and addiction. So um, self-medicating, especially through luteal phase. Um, I think that I've certainly noticed that, and I'd love to maybe do a whole video on this if you'd find it interesting, but I think for me, my financial well-being greatly differs throughout my cycle. I'm very much more um, <clears throat> prone to like spending or overspending in luteal phase. Um, I think because a variety of reasons, some is that my tastes and, you know, kind of feels of clothing and things are very like specific where I'm like, I need like looser clothing or I um, will be really repulsed by certain foods. Um, actually, some, during the second half of my cycle, I kind of struggle with that a bit. Um, and so I can end up if I don't have now, I kind of know in advance because I've done a lot of cycle practice over, over the years, what to have in, you know, my cupboards during those phases because what I'm more drawn to versus I'm actually like, one thing is chicken. I'm really weird about chicken. Um, 
I'm really weird about preparing raw meat in general, but chicken, for some reason, I can just get really grossed out by it at certain um, certain phases of my cycle. So I just won't won't buy any chicken for the second half of my cycle. Sometimes I really crave a good chicken soup in my menstrual phase, so I'll kind of maybe more likely to get like a pre-made one, like from there's an M&S at the road, so sometimes I'll duck in there and get something, rather than just having all this stuff that inevitably either gets chucked out or, you know, it goes in the freezer and I'll, I'll have it for a different phase of my cycle. So, <clears throat> And I also noticed when I stopped smoking that I was I would really crave it on a couple of days in my late in autumn, so luteal phase. I'd be like, suddenly I just have this, oh my God, I just want a cigarette. Or when I stopped drinking for three years and I was like, God, I just really want a drink today. And I'd be like, actually, I'm just probably really, really tired and fatigued. And the nicotine gives me that little kick of dopamine or, you know, a bit of an up, you know, that I'm kind of craving. Um, and actually now I, I, I'm still trying to practice, but I'm really like, okay, that's actually when I need like an early night. Like the progesterone is rising, the, all, this, all the hormones are there to have an earlier night. Like, can I light a couple of candles and just read a good book and snuggle up um and that's really challenging or to have a bit of, you know nice warm tea is there a way that i can care for myself more in very simple ways because i don't want to overthink it in luteal phase i'm not trying to make it any harder than i need to if i'm trying to force myself to swap out i don't know watching endless episodes of the opposite uh, of the office till midnight um i'm not going to be able to switch that by being like i'm going to do a yoga video like i'm not always gonna that's quite a hard switch up when i'm lying there being very passive doing not a lot versus maybe i'm just reading like and it could be a trashy novel it doesn't have to be like anything you know it doesn't have to be war and peace like it can just be like what's a nice book that i can read can i read a few pages of it now so that later on this evening i'm looking forward to the like, what's going to happen next can i kind of hook myself in enough um so yeah and i and i'd be quite intrigued you know it, it, obviously addiction is very personal but i'm i'm quite intrigued to see how that um you know i think there's a strong correlation there between maybe the moments of weakness or i don't want to say weakness actually that's not really the right phrasing but maybe like those cravings and things i think are very dominant during luteal phase um, and also i've put body and face dysmorphia and eating slash sugar addiction so i won't go into this loads in this um, episode but i definitely now i know about it for many many years before i actually came across yoga um, and meditation i absolutely hated my face like i i did quite a bit of like um dance shows and things when i was younger i was never really confident enough to go for the competitions um i just had absolutely no self-esteem but i just and i don't know if it was wearing makeup at quite a young age to do some of those dance shows i mean i'm not talking like super young i was probably like maybe i don't know 10 11 12 and it wasn't like you know um I wouldn't necessarily even wear makeup every day but like wearing it for some of those shows I was like oh I look so much better with makeup um, and it's obviously quite heavy makeup because you have to be seen under the lights and things um, and yeah and I don't know and I just really um, I think when you I think and I haven't done a lot of research on it so I don't want to speak for everyone else and I also like don't mean to come across as like very you know black and white with it but in my experience I think that me really hating my face and and also just having issues with 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 body and facial dysmorphia really came from a great sense of self-loathing and i think that um yoga really taught me some self-compassion at like the age of 23 and that seemed to have helped um with accepting my face because i also wanted to and i did a lot of performing arts i wanted to do go into acting and things and you know looks are a topic i mean even doing some of these videos when I first started filming these back in January, I had kind of missed the gym a bit. I'd had a really bad allergic um, rea reaction or dermatitis or something. So I was just like lots of patches like in the corner of my eyes and my lips and my and my hands and stuff. So I just wasn't feeling very confident. Um, and I gained a bit of weight, which I still have a bit of, but you know, I'm working on it. Um, and, you know, I just was like really struggling to just feel good. And I really was like nitpicking, you know, my face um and i was like Saucy, you need to stop like you you just need to stop like this is you know you know your practices like go back to the gym get back on that eat some good stuff doesn't have to be perfect do a little bit of meditation even if it's like a three five minute you know headspace one each day do some yoga with adrian you know the january she always does videos on january um every day for that month and i was like just get back on it like you need to do that for your own mental health because you can't be picking apart everything um, if you want to do YouTube stuff, right? It's just going to tear you up. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go into loads of bits, but I just, for me, I think that, and I think that probably those thoughts come actually less so now for me in luteal phase. I actually tend to feel a bit more ugh, in um, ovulation phase. I don't know if it's because sometimes I get the, the I'm going to butcher this, but the Mittelschmerz, which is like German for middle pain, like ovulation pain, basically. Um, and I don't know if like in luteal phase, I kind of the older I get, the more I lean into that, like, let's just like life's too short to give a an F kind of vibe. Um, whereas I think when I was younger, I would just maybe give less, less of a whatever, but I'd feel like I had to people please more. So again, um, yeah, I think cycle syncing can be, you know, um, a balm for those feelings. Um, and also eating sugar addiction. I mean, I, I mentioned this in a video that's to come, um, that I've already filmed, but a few back in January, I, didn't have my medication I hadn't had it for like five months because of the ADHD medication shortage which is just really really frustrating I know it's not just um, ADHD I know like um, diabetes etc also having issues with it and um, I was therefore like really finding it hard to not overeat because when I'm in luteal phase and that fatigue hits it's not just I have to remind myself it's not just tiredness it is like it is fatigue um like I'm just like the brain fog is there everything is so heavy it's so 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 difficult to just get out of bed um and I'll again me and Julia spoke about this in the podcast on the the spoon theory episode and I will be doing a video about that about that in um April time as well but um <clears throat> just not having the spoons to function um and that that also led to like you know having more cravings also it was like over christmas time so it was like you know the quality street was there and i'm not trying to bash sugar but like i really find that with chocolates and things like that i just everything is so much worse like two hours later because in that moment like i'm so tired and i just want the quick fix and then when i have that i'm just crashing and it's just an endless cycle of of roller coaster of emotions and it really really it really affects me and messes me up so um I find that especially like during luteal phase as I say that that's that is very problematic for me now I'm on the medication that does suppress my appetite so I don't find that um anywhere near as much and I can um control it without having to be like hyper super disciplined and that's all I think about if I'm not careful you know during that time if I'm not medicated it's really hard to like not just think about food and that's exhausting um so yeah perhaps that's some again some food for thought um and i think the the last sort of major thing that i wanted to say um is that um adhd yeah adhd and co i think comorbid conditions is the right phrasing for this so adhd is or neurospicy individuals are more prone to other health conditions um or you know conditions such as um ocd autism depression anxiety i think it's P-O-T-S, POTS, I think, I think that's the one I was thinking of, um, uh, hypermobility, um, I don't mean as in like where they're more prone, I, maybe the, the phrasing isn't quite right, there. I don't mean like, oh, if you've got ADHD, you might have autism, I think I just mean that there's um, a lot of like, um, uh, a lot of um, spillage into those different, um, into those different conditions, so sometimes it's hard to distinguish, as I mentioned earlier, um, but also can be more prone to, I mean, a lot of the time, the amount of times I looked up um, bipolar disorder before getting diagnosed with ADHD because, but this was before I was cycle syncing, so I didn't realise that there was a pattern because I was like, I don't understand like why I'm so up and so down all the time. Um, and actually now I know it was actually linked with my hormones, hence I think it's more likely, you know, PMDD um, and also the ADHD. Um, so, uh, but also things like um, hypermobility. So I discovered earlier this year that I'm hypermobile, no, late last year that I'm hy hypermobile. And I always thought maybe a little bit, but just probably flexible from years of dance and then teaching yoga. And then actually I had a back issue. I went to the um, chiropractor. I can't remember the name, but I think it was a chiropractor. And I went there, went there and um yeah he explained like he did all the tests i think there's like nine nine points or 13 contact points one of those and he was like uh you know we just do a little test on all of them and he was like yeah all of them are <laughs> hypermobile um so that was really interesting and then apparently yeah a lot of and, and any even and this is just i mean a lot of this this is just like yeah like a, a, some things that i've just been kind of reading and i haven't done a lot of like you know um hardcore like research into it but even things like um having um hypermobile 
eye muscles and how that can affect like the, the vision or maybe give you headaches or be more like prone to being irritated by light, stigmatisms, things like that. So there's like a whole, like, which I, I know is like a, a whole other thing. And again, for some people, like during their periods, I have like a, a friend who like during um, her period, she always gets really bad migraines. So I just think it's so interesting how these things can kind of overlap. Um, and she has um, dyslexia and something else I can't remember but anyway so I just think it's really interesting but I think going back to my point <clears throat> was that um I was also reading recently that a lot of people with ADHD or you know who are neurospicy also have are more prone to, to chronic illnesses like I know, fibromyalgia for example um and I think part of that from what I was reading part of that is because of the the way the nervous system can exacerbate or bring on those other conditions so because we are often in that kind of um, fight or flight state um, with our, um, you know, kind of emotional regulation and energy, you know, dysregulation, um, I think that that can then cause cause more problems in the body than we realise. Um, and again, it's something I would need to look into a lot more, but just looking at it from a yoga perspective with like the synthetic and the parasympathetic nervous system, um, for, I think that for me is why yoga has really helped. Yoga has been such a balm for me um, with having ADHD because there is something about it that just soothes me deeply. And I think it's that um, soothing of the fight or flight, um, uh, you know, uh, stress and cortisol levels in the body that that yoga does, you know, with the with the breath work, with the movement, with the meditation even if that's a meditation in movement there's something that the gym and a workout doesn't quite it doesn't quite do the same thing it's still fantastic but those two combined really really just soothe me on like a deeper deeper level um and i think that if we're not always doing that if we're always in that like fight or flight mode um then i think that that's how it can lead to other health conditions again i'm obviously not medically trained um and this is just again some some things i've read like you know on some other facebook posts but um it's just been quite interesting you know some of those obviously some of those people are, are trained in those areas so um it just makes sense to me if our nervous system is always dysregulated then it's going to lead to having you know other issues um and you know chronic illnesses um so yeah i think some sometimes you can't always differentiate what it is that's causing it but i think i like you know autism or adhd um, but I think cycle literacy can at least bring awareness and give us a heads up of more challenging, you know, phases of our cycle. Um, you know, if I know that I'm going to be more challenged during like luteal phase, for example, there's things I can put in place. I know if there's foods that are going to repulse me and then if I'm not careful, I just won't eat and then I'll just feel horrendous. Um, you know, there's things that I can put in place for that. So, um, I hope this video was fruitful. Um, I'm going to stop it now because it's a lot longer than I was planning for it to be. But um, I hope that it was helpful. And I'd really love to, you know, listen to, you know, some of your opinions. If you have any, then feel free to comment below. Um, obviously, it's, you know, an area, especially sort of the last bit. There's a lot of research that I would like to do. Um, so I'm by no means an expert, but it's just interesting to have these dialogues um, and have these, you know, share our experiences. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next uh, episode, next video. Okay, thanks. Bye, folks.